I'd like to call this November the 3rd Cattle Pass Commission meeting to order. Roll call, please, Mr. Clerk. Dominic Johnson, McPherson, Lynn, Bowman, Baker, Kent, Escadet, Thibodeau, Cox, Harold Smith, Jefferson. We have a quorum, Mr. President. Okay, thank you. I'd like to ask Pastor Mary Richards of the Holy Cross Episcopal Church to lead us in the invocation. And after Pastor Richard, I'd like for Dr. Ernest Lampkin, uh, USA Air Force veteran, to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Pastor Richard, would you come forward to the podium, please, ma'am? <coughs> Let us pray. Dear God, we come to you today thankful for the life you've given us, for hearts to care and for hands to serve. Lead us and guide us today. Open our hearts to one another so that we can work with you for the good of all people. We ask this in the name of the love that you give so freely to all people. Amen. 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 <coughs> we'll say the Pledge of Allegiance, please. We pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, 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 indivisible, with, with liberty, liberty and justice, justice for all. Thank you, Pastor Richards and Dr. Quick Lampkins. Are there any agenda additions? Okay. At this time, if there is any citizen in the audience that would like to address this body on any item other than an item that's on the agenda for public hearing today, please go to the foyer, fill out a visitor recognition card, get it to me up at the podium, and you'll be recognized. We have a total of 15 minutes on any particular subject. And any individual comments will be limited to three minutes. At this time, I have one, two, three, four, five. I have five recognition cards in reference to the Confederate flag. Uh, we will do three minutes apiece, or however you'd like to break that down. At this time, I would like to ask that everyone will silence their cell phones and any other forms of communication that may be audible prior to us kicking off the meeting. So the first person I recognize today will be Mr. Lord Thompson. Would you come forward, step, sir, state your name and address for the record, and you may proceed. You have three minutes. First of all, let me say good afternoon. My name is Lloyd Thompson, 1315 Milam Street, Shreveport, Louisiana, 71133. Just kind of wanted to put a statement on record. Uh, taking down the Confederate flag, removing from the courthouse, will open up uh, participation that I'm prepared to move forward and going forward to make sure that uh, our, com our community understands the importance of us working together and doing the things to make this parish a great parish for the state. Thank you for considering the issue and looking forward to more comments later. Thank you. Next we have Ms. Mary Richard. Ms. Richard, would you come forward, state your name and address for the record, and you may proceed. Sorry, Pastor. <laughs> Mary Richard, 8 Dudley Square, Shreveport, Louisiana. Our public buildings, I believe, are symbols of the ideals of our people and our nation and just as our flags are symbols our nation is founded if on nothing else freedom and justice for all people even though these were very much ideals when our country was founded and slavery was an accepted reality we've grown into those ideals the the confederate flag is an important part of the history of our nation and of the southern united states but it doesn't embody for all people the ideals of our nation. Our courthouses especially speak the ideals of justice and they should be, they must be surrounded with symbols that speak of justice 
and freedom for all people. If we can decide today to remove the Confederate flag from the grounds of our courthouse, it will be a step in the direction of, of living in further to those into further further into those ideals of freedom and justice. The cost of the flag from 1951 flying until today has been for a number of people to mistrust the fair and equal metting out of justice in the courthouse. And if we can remove it, we can begin to move forward to realize those ideals more fully. Thank you, ma'am. Next we have Mr. Sam, is it Sam? Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Carl Staples. Mr. Staples, would you come to the podium, state your name and address for the record, you may proceed. Good afternoon. My name is Carl Staples and uh, I'm here to see if we can come upon a uh, decision to say possibly Sir, remove. State your name and address for the record, please. Carl Staples, 1716 Jamison Street, Shreveport, Louisiana. Okay, I'm here to uh, see if we can come upon a decision to say possibly remove the Confederate flag from uh, in front of a court of law because of its contradictory nature, or its legacy, it's totally inappropriate in its position where it is now. And hopefully we can come upon some amicable agreement uh, in regards to, say, both sides, those for and those against. Thank you. Next we have Mr. Sam Roberson. Come forward, sir. State your name and address for the record, and you may proceed. Pastor Robinson, uh, Pastor Robinson, uh, 224 Lincoln Street. You say you pronounce that as Robertson? Robertson. R O B R S O N. Okay, thank you. Pastor Robinson. Okay. My concern today is that I played say that. Uh, it represented liberty and justice for all. And my concern is the Confederate flag at the federal courthouse in, in uh, downtown Freeport. And I do believe I've served my country in the Army and I believe in the love of America. And I think that justice should be served for all. And if we're going to be true to our creed and true to our honor, we must honor liberty and justice for all. And I believe that the Confederate flag is a, a, a long overdue issue that needs to be considered. And I feel that if the flag is moved from the Court of Justice, then we are serving our nation, our citizen, and Freeport can become the great city and the lead, leading in, other, in the nation to do what is right, to all us are equal under God. And that we should remove it and let Freeport stand as a representative that we do believe in our Constitution, our pledge, and American flag, that we are all be justice and liberty under the laws of our statutes. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Reverend Barbara Jarrell, come forward, please. State your name and address for the record, ma'am, and you may proceed. Barbara Gerald, 101 Napoleon Drive, Shreveport, Louisiana, 71115. Shreveport is a city that's complex, like every other city, and we have some challenging things in our history. Um, initial impressions are really important for our city as we try to participate in progress and being stronger economically and um, being innovative. Um, growing with the times. Initial impressions are lasting, and for anyone approaching our courthouse for the first time, the first thing they encounter is a symbol of something in our past that doesn't
strike a sense of justice for all. Um, to consider changing that so that the impression of justice is there for everyone who approaches our centers of justice for the first time, I think, is significant. And I appreciate y'all taking this into consideration today. Thank you, Mayor. Mr. Beaton Kelly. Kelly, would you come forward? State your name and address for the record, sir, and you may proceed. Mr. President, uh, my name is Benton Kelly, and I live in uh, District 5 out on Cross Lake. And I am here to uh, ask the commissioners. I have already spoken to the commissioner in my district, uh, Mr. Johnson. And my purpose for being here is that I would like to say uh, I'm 80 plus years of age, and uh, I remember when that flag was put up. I've been gone from Shreveport for over 50 years. But uh, anyway, at that particular flag is not a battle flag. That particular flag is a flag of the states that were involved in the Confederacy, which Louisiana happened to be one of those states. Unfortunately, it was a, it was a sad thing for all of our people in the, uh, in the uh, United States. But the reason for that flag being there is a purpose of one that I think is is uh, meant for the African Americans and for the white people in the uh, United States or in the southern part of the states. That flag is there to honor the people who lost their lives during the Civil War. Now, for those of you who are not really particularly familiar with all of the surroundings of everything that took place in that, I'm not a historian, but I'm a reader. And that particular flag is there to honor those people who lost their lives. There were African Americans that were there at that particular time who fought for the Confederacy, volunteering, and they lost their lives. Whether it was in, in, in Atlanta at the, at the prison camp over there, or whether they were killed during battle. But anyway, my request for you, Mr. President, and you council members, I am asking you, please, please, do not remove that flag because it means an awful lot to an awful lot of people. You take the flag, you remove that flag, listen to me and hear me very clearly. That flag that's behind you, Mr. President, the Louisiana flag, if you remove that flag from the Confederacy flag, that was part of the Confederacy. What are you going to do? You're going to remove the Louisiana flag next? I thank you for listening to me and let me speak to you, all of you council members, and you, Mr. President. God bless. Okay? Thank you, sir. Okay. Are there any other requests? Sure. Uh, you need to fill out a card, sir. They were they were turn turn. Do we have any? Maybe all of them. Pardon? We can get some, Mr. Everson. Oh, here we go, here we go, here we go. I'm sorry. Here we go. Okay. All right, let me group them. That's, okay, that's that. That's the flag. Uh, Willie Bedford? Bradford. Bradford, okay. And the flag, hold up, hold up. Let, let, let me organize them, please. Uh, John David Long flag, okay, that's it. Okay. All right, we'll go with this one. Okay, Mr. Next we have, I'm sorry, Mr. Baffert, let me get, uh, uh, I'll get to you. Okay. Next we have Mr. Henry L. Ward. Henry L. Ward. Uh, my name is Henry L. Ward. I live at 445 Jordan Street, Shreveport, Louisiana, 71101. Uh, I am a 30 year old military veteran. I served in the country of Bosnia and served in the country of Iraq. Uh, I've also found out that all my grandfathers and everybody in my family has served in the military, okay? I've researched it all the way back. I found that my fifth great grandfather served in the Confederacy. He was a veteran of the U.S. Armed Forces, those Confederate Armed Forces, which fought to make this country. You know, the decisions that were made after the Civil War is what built this country. Uh, it's ironic that this vote is today uh, seeing as how today is uh, a salute to military personnel. Right here in this little uh, pamphlet it says, to salute to uh, military personnel of past, present, and future. 
My grandfather fought. He served in the military. He served for this country. He served for the state of Louisiana. He stayed, served for the state of Arkansas. He saved, served for the South. And uh, he served for all of us, for our freedoms today. Um, that's it. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Next we have Mr. Willard Bradford. Come forward, state your name and address for the record, sir. You may proceed. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, and to the body, this distinguished uh, commission, and to my commissioner, Commissioner Bowman. And may I also congratulate uh, Commissioner uh, Pearson for <coughs> his work here and him moving on. We appreciate your work, Mr. Pearson. <coughs> Mr. Chairman, someone once said that there's nothing as powerful than an idea whose time has come. It has come before this body, the opportunity to do something that your predecessors did not do, and that is to start a new chapter in the lives of the citizens of this parish. In all due respect to the proponents of this <laughs> idea, this is a different time, this is a different era, this is a different culture than when that flag was erected. The citizens of this community now request and, and ask of you to remove the flag so that it will reflect the diversity of this city, the diversity of this parish, so that we can now move on as a progressive parish, as a progressive city, and as a progressive state. I think the removal of that flag will send a strong message throughout this region and throughout this country that Carroll Parish is now a part of the new millennium where we recognize the, the, the diversity of our citizens and we respect all our citizens because we're not saying, Mr. Chairman, that this flag should be buried. We ask that it be removed from the public square where we feel to bring shame upon a segment of the citizens, which is unfair. We're all a part of this parish. We're all a part of this environment. And we appreciate you <coughs> and your actions today. And that is to vote to remove the flag so that we can move on in a new chapter in Carroll Parish. Thank you very much. Next we have Mr. John David Long. Mr. Long, come forward. State your name and address for the record, sir, and you may proceed. My name is John David Long, 318 West 70th Street, Shreveport, Louisiana. I've heard some things today that have very much upset me. It's not based upon fact. It's based upon what other people would have us believe. Dr. Martin Luther King said in the second, third, and fourth sense of this, a famous I Have a Dream speech, 100, uh, five score years ago, a great American in whose symbolic shadow we stand today signed the Emancipation Proclamation. This momentous decree came as a great beckoning light of hope to millions of Negro slaves who had been seared in the flames of withering injustice. It came as a joyous daybreak to end the long night of our captivity. Now, how many of you probably have ever heard that? I bet hardly any of you. Well, what Mr. King did not know is that he never read the Emancipation Proclamation, which said, as the states and parts of states wherein the people thereof respectively are this day in rebellion against the United States to follow into it, Arkansas, Texas, Louisiana, except the parishes of St. Bernard, Plaquemine, Jefferson, St. John, St. Charles, St. James, Ascension, Assumption, Terrible, Food, St. Mary, St. Martin, Orleans, including the city of New Orleans, Mississippi, Alabama, Florida, Georgia, now North Carolina, South Carolina, Virginia, except the 48 counties designated as West Virginia. Also, the counties of Berkeley, Accomack, Northampton, Elizabeth City, York, Prince Anne, Norfolk, includes the cities of Norfolk and Portsmouth, and which accepted parts are for the present left precisely as if this proclamation were not issued. But people of the commission, I will tell you, Abraham Lincoln freed no slaves with his Emancipation Proclamation. I am so glad you made your little dedication here to veterans before I came up, as far I, before I stepped up here, because I'm here to represent eight men, my great, great grandfathers who did not own slaves but each one had homes and families they were defending let me tell you that monument and that flag up there is a representation not of racism not of bigotry but of Christian patriotic uh, constitutionary liberty you've been misled about what it means you need a history lesson the blue X represents the Christian cross of St. Andrew the first disciple of Jesus Christ the white border around that X represents the protection of God. The 13 stars, the 13 southern states of, of, of secession. The red field represents the blood of Christ. It was put on a second national, uh, second national stainless bag to show the purity of, of the cause for which these men fought. But they had to add the red bar in order to distinguish it between a flag of surrender or a truce under battlefield conditions. 
They added the red bar to symbolize the blood sacrificed by those who gave their lives to protect their homes and their family and the Confederate cause, which was constitutional liberty. And I will tell you right now, through the blood of Christ, with the protection of God, we the 13 states united in our Christian fight for liberty. If you've got the nerve to vote against that flag, you vote against Christian liberty. You vote against people who believe in defending their homes. You vote to cover up a history that has been so disrespected, disregarded, and so maligned and misrepresented. If you've got the nerve to do that, you go right ahead. But I will tell you right now, I will curse you to the say you died. And I say, I saw the day and I spoke there the day they took that flag down. Thank you all very much. Thank you, Mr. Long. Next we have Mr. Azriel McLean. Being Bible, I'm here as a local clergyman. I'd say that I would like to see the flag come down. Amen. Because first of all, let me say this. Name and address for the record, please. I'm Reverend Alvin G. McLean. Oh. Oh. It's, it's not okay. Local clergyman. Ad address, sir. 6319 South Inglewood Road, Freeport, 71119. Let me say I'm here because I love this community. I grew up here, but we are divided, and symbols have a way of dividing. I too uh, have military, uh, a family who fought in the military, and they swore allegiance to one flag, first of all. That is that flag of stars and stripes. And I said stars and stripes forever. But the flag uh, brings about painful memory in our history. But it's time to shrewd for them to move forward to psychologically and symbolically come back into the Union. I empathize with uh, those in opposition, but let me say that I discovered, and you can tell by my skin complexion, I had relatives that owned slaves, and by the way, I discovered in my family history that I had a relative that fought in the Ninth Brigade of the Louisiana Confederacy. But I also I feel as an American, it's time for us to move on. Now, I remember reading uh, words by a man named Alexander Stevenson, who was vice president of the Confederacy, and he said his bedrock rested in the inferiority of the Negro or the black man. I don't think this community wants to live in a symbol that epitomizes those sentiments. I would like to see it taken down and has put in a place because uh, we cannot escape the fact that uh, the Civil War happened. We cannot escape the fact that Shreve was the last city to surrender to the Union. <coughs> but I think it should come down because people from out of town come here and want to visit our community and they feel that we have not moved on. <coughs> and we're not going to want to uh, live here and invest and bring jobs here. I think this state has lost quite a few people in the last 30 years, and it's time to move on. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, next we'll have Mr. Craig B. Lee. Mr. Lee, if you come forward, state your name and address for the record. You have three minutes, sir. <coughs> Craig Lee. 1035 Eustis Street, Shreveport, Louisiana. It's interesting that I, I come down uh, today. Uh, I'm definitely in support of my colleagues here. Uh, but I actually came down today to clear up some confusion as it relates to our 2012 proposal budget for the C.C. Antoine Black History Celebration. And, and the interesting thing about that is, you know, listening to the opposition in reference to the flag, C.C. Antoine, of course, is the person responsible for incorporating the city of Shreveport. And of course, he fought for the Union Army. Um, one of the big things as it relates to our project um, is to bring about uh, cultural diversity. And I, I applaud this, this group because they are cross-section of the community. Um, I spoke to Commissioner Johnson today, and he had advised me that the, there was some confusion as it relates to our plan 
in terms of C.C. Antoine's house. The question came up, who actually controls the funds at the state level as it relates to the house? Basically, here's what you have. And I applaud the commissioners that voted to amend the budget on this past year of 2011 budget and those who went against it. And I told you guys that when the vote came down 6-5, even though we needed the seventh vote to approve it. Here's what you have in the city of Shreveport and the parish of Caddo. You got nonprofits who receive money and they don't execute what they're actually supposed to be doing. And the organization that was supposed to be edifying the brand of C.C. Antoine has not done so. They've received over the past decade anywhere from a half a million to almost a million dollars of funding. And none of the resources have gone to bring tourists into the city of Shreveport. Senator Greg Tarver, before he left the state senate, advocated for $300,000 to be in the budget at the state level to resurrect or reconstruct C.C. Antoine's house on Parent Street. That money is basically set up over the past decade. As a result of our work in terms of elevating C.C. Antoine as a tourism draw, you now have entities that are trying to either move that property downtown in the Shreveport Commons or basically try to partake that property somewhere else. We basically put it in our project to say we can actually resurrect that particular project and put it with our overall piece. But the money actually is at the state level and was designated to the African American Multicultural Tourism Group. But we are the vanguards of C.C. Antoine's legacy. We have participated in a coalition building with the C.C. Antoine Masonic Lodge as well as Mr. Gary Joyner and Mr. Eric Brock, those particular historians, on this issue. And I have this document that I wanted to give to all of the commissioners. Lee, you have about 30 seconds. The document just talks about Louisiana being number one in the percentage of black tourists in the state of Louisiana. And that is the focus of our efforts to generate significant tax revenue based on culture tourism in Capital Parish. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Okay. We have no further calls for recognition. Let me make sure I don't have anything buried. I was a little late today. Excuse me for being late. I had an accident on I-20. I was tied up, so I got a little behind. Okay, so I think we've cleared out all the persons that wanted to speak. And I would just like to state that I'm very glad at what I've seen and heard here today. And I think it speaks well for the citizens of our parish as well as this body. Next item, please, Mr. Clerk. Next item, we have visitors. Mr. Gary Hanson, Red River Watershed Management Institute presentation. Just a comment. Now, was this advanced from Monday's agenda? No, sir. It was added under visitors. Okay. All right. Go ahead. Gary Hanson, 2100 Avenue, 31st today. I'm here to update you on the water plan that we've been working on for approximately three years. And I'd like to also thank all of you who have been involved in the proactive stance of going out and collecting this data, especially under the conditions we're under right now with this incredible drought. I'll run through these slides fairly quickly. One of our concerns in northwest Louisiana is that our aquifer that we work with is the Wilcox Aquifer. And that aquifer is exposed over a very large area. It also degrades the aquifer and makes it not to be a very useful aquifer. When we look at it, the cross-section up here, we see that right below this aquifer is the Midway Shell and saltwater. This is the lowest aquifer in the state of Louisiana. We don't have any other fresh water below that. As you can see on this diagram on the left over here, we're looking at, we believe, a series of channels that are very, very difficult to map. You can drill one well and find several sands, move over 10, 15 feet, and miss the same sands. So it's very difficult to map and also extremely difficult to model. Just trying to give you an idea of what we're looking at. Also, the boulders you see out on the parkway, that's one of our problems. We have a lot of concretions in those channels, so we have a poor aquifer. 
This is the USGS publication showing that several of the sands throughout the area are also brackish in nature, not from salt water from oil and gas, but because fresh water has not been driven down through them to push the salt water on down and dip. We have two programs that are going right now, one with the cattle parish in, in uh, LSU Shreveport. We monthly check water levels, which is a high level or resolution. Uh, most uh, federal and, and uh, other entities check on a quarterly basis. We also quarterly do water quality monitoring. We take samples in the lab and have them analyzed. In addition, I won't have time to really go over it, but we've got a thousand well program going right now, and we're up to just about a thousand wells by the end of this week. We've been analyzed for over 30 different chemicals for uh, three parishes, including Caddo Parish. And to date, we've found no significant contaminants in any of those wells. We started out this program by looking at the development of Shreveport. We were concerned about the southern part of the city on the south side in the parish, that we did not have sufficient water for development, high density development. As we moved on, we put in five wells originally. Four of those were on the south border. We've additionally added five other wells. We're using the highest technology you can find anywhere. These wells are able to sample uh, very quickly within about 15 minutes and uh, give very quality data. This is some data we collected on just the level <coughs> over the last three years. A report is generated and, and sent to uh, the Public Works, uh, Mr. Robert Glass. And I'd also like at this point to thank Robert Glass, Woody Wilson, uh, Ken Myers, one of the citizens, uh, Bill Hanna, in the previous uh, administration, for helping put this together. Early on, we saw some very strange things happening with uh, a couple of our wells. I want, see, I want you to see it from my perspective. Up here, we see a well that's showing a low during the uh, summer, and the uh, well is picking up during the winter. That seems logical. We had another well nearby that was near the beginning of the Hainsville Shell fracking that was doing just the opposite. Early on, we determined that that could be a problem. We approached the industry. We approached the Department of Natural Resources and explained that to them. The uh, larger companies went and put in self uh, programs uh, for water, in-house programs for dealing with water, and started going to surface water. <coughs> we also worked with the uh, Corps of Engineers to, to start using the Red River water. They're using, starting to use more of that water, and also the Sudbury River Authority. We set up a subcommittee of a larger group we had with the U.S. Corps of Engineers, U.S. Fish and Wildlife, all of the really important stakeholders to find ways to get to surface water and do it effectively and ecologically correctly. As we went on with that well, after our meetings, you can see as we go to the next well, it eventually turns into the typical curve. When we started this program, it said it would take two to three years to understand what was going on with the water. And now we can see that pattern developing there at the Keithville well. Now, a well that was uh, being impacted, uh, I think negatively, initially on, uh, early on, is back in the same pattern with all the other wells. These are two wells that are very important here, Mayo Road and Keyfield Road. These are the two wells that were used to set up the emergency order on August the 19th. The water started, we didn't even have a, a peak. What we're looking at mainly on these curves is consumption. This is not the re, uh, refilling of the aquifer. This is, takes way too much time to get down to that level. This is actually what's being drawn out by the, by the uh, residents of the parish. And Mayo Road, we were concerned in the beginning because it was 100 100 uh, um, unit subdivision being built that would be supplied only with one well. As it turned out, we had wells in June, July that started losing, uh, the, the homeowners started losing their water. In fact, they did lose their water in Jade Circle. Luckily, the developer had built the wells so that they were 20 feet deeper and they could drop the wells. They are at the bottom of the Wilcox Aquifer now. You can see the steep curve on the right up there. This is the point where we went to the Secretary of the Department of Natural Resources, Scott Angel, and asked him that we need some help. The Keyfield well was also doing the same thing. We were dropping about six feet in these two wells per month. Keyfield. <coughs> Very steep curve. This was just before, or actually about the time that we were able to get the August 19th uh, conservation order. 
since that conservation order, the wells have returned up. We have two areas that were picked in southern um, part of the, uh, the parish, LB Road area and the Keyfield area. Notice about three weeks after the order was in place, we started to see an uptick of about three feet of water at the Mail Road. The next month, we saw 10 feet increase, incredibly quick increase. And then the last month, we saw a little downturn. We don't know if that's a long-term adjustment or not. But we still need to keep the conservation order in place. The curve, as you see, overall is down. These people do not have any water below that depth. So it's critical that we bring it back up to <coughs> conservation as quick as we can. Key fill is not as, uh, does not seem to be as serious as you can see. That uptick, uptick is continuing. We have a well at Tannis Park that's uh, doing a lot better than the other wells. I'll skim through some of these slides to get to. The other thing is water quality. Starting out at Mayo Road, we look for TDS, total dissolved solids. They've always been pretty high at that well. When we look at key field, we see a definite trend. The TDS is going up and the water level is going down. That's what you'd expect to see in a natural situation. Again, at Hammonds Park, uh, it's, it's uh, screened at about 170 feet instead of 240 feet, and uh, it's much more level. This is a USGS well just outside the parish in DeSoto. And if you notice up on the screen, we had a downturn taking place in about 2004, and that curve has stayed the same consistently down to the point of the last year and a half during this drought. And you notice it drops precipitously right here. This is one of the wells we're going to continue to use in our monitoring effort. It is on a quarterly basis, not a monthly basis. We had the hands of shell fracking develop in uh, 2007 and 8. Uh, there is no major change in that curve. We are in a drought. This is a month ago, a couple months ago. This is the latest. The drought is extended throughout the United States, not getting any better. And this is through January the 31st. So we're probably looking right now at rain for March, April maybe. This is the map we're using right now to bring in some older wells and some uh, actually some uh, supply wells for oil and gas. We're going, going to bring in four DNR, LSUS, slash Cattle Parish and the U.S. Geological Survey work together and we pick four additional wells to move into those areas to help the monitoring. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Mr. Clark. No special resolutions. We move communicate and committee reports. Uh, uh, on let me, uh, hold up a minute. Let, let me make something clear. Now, this this is a an issue that was put on here not being advanced from Monday, okay? It, it probably is going to garner some questions. So this basically should have been put on Monday and advanced to today. Or this particular presentation should have been put on Monday. Okay? Right. So I think this is something that needs to be put in another situation where we can get a little more uh, detailed uh, information on it and, and instead of belonging the meeting. Mr. President, I requested that be done because Mr. Hansen called and said it was an emergency or really that we needed to hear about it. So I called Mr. Lucky and asked for that to be done. And well, 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 that's, uh, that's kind of a problem because we knew what we were going to have today, sir. And, uh, you know, you know, we'd like for our citizens to come out. And we, you know, you know, I like punctual and structured and orderly meetings, you know, and I want no surprises because people are basically coming for a, a particular thing. I do understand right. that and I do uh -huh. respect it. And I wish, you know, maybe this had been, uh, you know, the, the item for that would have been on the agenda edition. But, uh, uh, Mr. Lynn, how many questions do you have? I have two questions and they probably come on have already been answered. Um, Where is Mr. Hansen? Right. Oh, here. here it's Mr. Hansen, um, do you know when DNR is going to be coming up here and where they will be meeting? I believe it was in the paper today. Yes, and I forgot to say that. I'm sorry. Thank you. Uh, it will be, uh, they'll be in Weston on Tuesday night next week. They'll be here on Wednesday the 9th at 5.30 at the State Fair Museum, giving the same presentation that they're giving around the state at the other four locations. Thank you. The second question I have is for Mr. Glass. Mr. Glass, 
May I have a copy of the questions and concerns that Caddo Parish will present to the Department of Natural Resources at the State Exhibit Museum on Wednesday at 530? Thank you. If you could email those to me, I would greatly appreciate it. That's all I have, Mr. President. Okay. Thank you, sir. Ken. John. May, I, may you send those to everybody, please? Yeah. Robert. Sorry. I would like that sent to everybody, please. Okay. Thank you. I see it. Yes, yeah, thank you. Next order, Mr. Clerk. New days committee report. Report on inner city economic development site visits to Oklahoma City. <laughs> Ms. Lynch. <laughs> um, as you all know, uh, several uh, commissioners join a total of about 51 uh, community uh, leaders, people from the private sector, people from the nonprofit sector, as well as uh, elected officials on an inner city visit to Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, a few weeks ago. Um, I believe I uh, want to commend Mayor Glover for uh, having the foresight to, <coughs> to host uh, this diverse group of, of leaders from Cattle Parish and going to Oklahoma City. Um, while we were there, there were a few takeaways that I wanted to, um, to bring to our attention. We've tried um, several different approaches as we look forward to progressing and moving our parish forward. You know, we've hired people that have come from other places, you know, that are doing great things other places, and we, we hire them away from where they are and transplant them here to try and um, incorporate those things from those other places here. Well, that hadn't, you know, really quite worked for us too well. We've had people to leave the city, move other places, and that have come back. Uh, to try to uh, uh, transform some things in our communities that they saw in other places that they lived, and that's had some mixed, su mixed success. Then we've had folks that, uh, and I think we may have heard a little, bit, little of that today, who don't want anything to change. We just want things to kind of stay the same, maintain the status quo, and we know that moving forward, that's not going to work for our community. So what this trip allowed us to do was to have uh, cross-section of our community, uh, travel together uh, on a bus, albeit, um, for I guess about seven hours, to all hear the same thing at the same time and to see the same thing at the same time and um, uh, facilitate some discussions and some relationships that will be needed to move our parish forward. Uh, there in Oklahoma City, and, and there are two other commissions that went, they may have some other uh, things that they saw, but one uh, takeaway for me was how they utilize their medical and health campuses. We have LSU and willis Knighton here primarily in Trumpert, but they use those corridors as a strategic model for community revitalization uh, and for economic development and job creation. So we saw an example of that. Secondly, um, and this is something that we are working toward with the, with the joint economic development entity that we're looking at doing with the city, but they have a strategic fo focus on existing local companies and growing those companies and expanding those companies. And uh, we were given an example, and we all know about Chesapeake Energy, but that is a local company that has grown into a Fortune 500 company that started right there in Oklahoma City. Uh, thirdly, there was a community vision, a shared community vision that uh, uh, brought the community, it engaged the community, a cross-section of the community where they embraced the diversity of their city. city. Uh, there's a particular focus on entrepreneurs um, and pushing them to uh, create and to develop innovative strategies uh, and to look into innovative products and services. Uh, I was at a, an event last night at the Robinson that Cohabitat uh, sponsored in the TED, though I forgot what the, what the acronym was for, but there was a room full of, I would say, 40 and under young folks who are um, really engaged in this technology. Uh, and it got me to thinking we may, we may want to revisit some funding for them, but I mean, we have bits and pieces of, of positive things going on here, but, um, and hopefully this trip will allow us to bring those pieces together 
under a common goal, a common project uh, that we can uh, implement. Lastly, uh, I think downtown living was another area that was discussed in great detail. Uh, they talked about their challenges with that, the mistakes that they made, and just in the conversation that I heard, um, Liz Swain, who is the executive director of Downtown Development Authority, you know, talking about some different approaches that they had not uh, considered before, just from from the information that we were able to to uh, glean there. We saw some things that you know everybody was giving the thumbs up to that yes, you know, we want to do this, we want to do that. Uh, there's a follow-up meeting next week of this group to move forward. We've had plans before, and one of the things that I said uh, when we were there, we've had plans before. We've had the building Daniel studies. We've had the SB initiative. We've had the Urban Land Institute. But, you know, all those plans tend to sit, <coughs> sit on the shelf. You know, people come together for a brief period of time. But at some point, we're going to have to move to action. And I think this trip... Uh, will be the catalyst to take those plans, take that, the, you know, the master plan, take those prior studies, take what we saw on the trip and actually implement something. So uh, I appreciate you all in supporting us today <coughs> and uh, I'm sure we'll be continuing to give updates. Let me go to the next mm -hmm. thing. Okay. <coughs> on the project Sierra, I'm, await, I'm awaiting an additional piece of information on that to really discuss it in a little more detail. But again, I want to reiterate my uh, concern and some of the things that I'm hearing, you know, just out in the community about things that are being promised, things that are, you know, being negotiated, whether it's <coughs> buildings, land, infrastructure, uh, who are expending taxpayer resources uh, already for a project that we have not formally uh, said that we were supporting as a commission body. So I, I may be discussing that a little bit more once I get <coughs> that additional information I'm waiting on. Thank you. Okay. Any more communicators and reports from any? Mr. Dominique, Mr. anyone Mr. else? Just one thing. I did put a little article from the Freeport Bar Association. It just talks about, it was written by uh, Jim Hill, who's a local attorney. It's a concise um, little article concerning Veterans Day. I thought you might want to read it. Um, it just took me a couple minutes. I figured being up in North Kettle Parish, it takes me a couple minutes. Y'all can read it in 30 seconds. And um, it did just a good job explaining what Veterans Day is all about. And this being our celebration, I just wanted to give y'all a call. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. President. Okay. All right. Okay. Uh, what do we have, Ms. Lynch, on second go round? Well, I had a question. I'm still waiting on a report on the Advantage Cattle Program. Still have not received it. What's I'll find out, Miss Lynch. Okay. Thank find you. out what the, what the status of it is and let you know. Okay. Thank you. Any other communiques? Report from any commissioner. Okay. Uh, next order, Mr. President's report, sir. Okay. Um. On Monday, I received a call from the St. Louis Post-Dispatch in reference to uh, General Motors taking the Colorado Canyon uh, and the other vehicle from this plant here and shutting it down and opening up in Wentzville, Missouri. And she asked for a comment, and of course, I gave her a comment. Whether they are printed or not, that's another thing. <laughs> so uh, go online and check with the St. Louis Post-Dispatch. I think they're making their formal announcement today in Winsfield, Ohio, that they will be spending $380 million on the current plant that's there. They will be expanding it by 1 million square feet. They will be hiring 1,850 new additional employees, which basically everything that they're doing now we had in place right here and now. So I doubt if they print what I said, but... <laughs> <laughs> we have some wishful thinking, so keep watching for the St. Louis Dispatch and see if they'll print my comments. You tell me to go buy a Ford? <laughs> <laughs> and also, uh, it appears as though, you know, we're engaged in the uh, Joint Economic Development Venture with the Parish of Caddo and the City of Shreveport. Uh, it appears that we're heading in the right direction. Uh, I have an article from the St. Louis Post-Dispatch that they are doing the same things, and we better hurry up where we can get in the game because I think we've seen clearly and definitively what can happen if we don't have a strong player at the table. 
about what transpired here between this Jerry Moses plant here and the one in Missouri. Uh, Mr. Lucky, on you know the 14th is our deadline for getting with any other entities that would like to add uh, any items to our marketing brochure with Racial Trust LLC. Yes, sir. In reference to uh, the disposition of General Motors property. So if you would uh, get with Craig <coughs> Foreman and see where we are at this point in time, we need to report back to uh, Bruce uh, around about the 14th of this month. Well, uh, there'll a special <coughs> meeting Monday, November the 14th at 3 o'clock p.m. And the purpose of this special meeting will be to appoint an interim commissioner to fill the unexpired term of Commissioner Pearson's uh, uh, district now that he has been elected to the Cattle Parish School Board. And he will be, I think, assuming office there on the 14th, 15th, if I may be correct. So let's get that uh, public notice well, out. What time's the meeting again, please? 3 o'clock p.m. Okay. Monday, November the 14th, 3 o'clock p.m. Be prior to our work oh, okay, session. Okay. Mm -hmm. Should be brief just for the appointment of that interim uh, person to fill that position. Uh, okay. All right. We got you. Uh, Mr. Lucky, you have been sending some deals that we get from the uh, North Louisiana Economic Development Partnership. So if you would, from now on, it appears as those, we can just send those right to Bruce. It's a possibility some of those things may fit uh, within that particular. Uh, within that plant, you know, which we're trying to move once they uh, yes, close down. Uh, Mr. Tim Miles is here, and I visited with him earlier today. I don't know if Tim is still here, but uh, he is aware, and, and I asked him to get in touch with Bruce, but we'll make sure that they get that. Okay. Uh, Mr. Grill, I think uh, in the meeting of May the 16th, I'd ask you to contact Swebco and get a figure of the fuel surcharge that they charge the residents, the customers in Caddo Parish from I think June of 2010 until June of 2011. Uh, have we received that yet? Uh, let me uh, let me check on it, Mr. Jefferson. Uh, I, 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 I just don't recall. Don't I'm recall? I want to get back with you. Oh. Okay, we, well, they've been they've been on me out in my district. We're having all these power outages and they paying these high bills. I thought I had clarified it to you what I what I, I need. Asking, I remember asking for the information, Mr. Epperson, and just out of the clear blue sky, I don't <coughs> what the answer was or getting the answer without going back and checking them off. But you will hear from me very shortly. That's all I have, Mr. Craig. Adopt the minutes of the regular meeting held on October 20th. Second. Second. Moved by Commissioner Lynn, seconded by who went? Paul. Commissioner Pearson, that we adopt the minutes of the regular meeting held on October 20th. Seeing no request for a debate or discussion, we'll vote. Minutes are adopted. Adopt the minutes of special meeting held on October 27th, 2011. So moved. Second. Moved by. Commissioner Johnson, seconded by Commissioner Pearson. Any discussion? Seeing no request, we'll vote, please. That passes. Next, we move to public hearing on the ordinances. <coughs> Number 5134 of 2011, declaring certain adjudicated properties to be surplus and to authorize the parish administrator or designate to sell parish tax interest. Is there anyone here to speak in favor? of ordinance number 5134 of 2011. Anyone here to speak in opposition? <coughs> okay, next order, please, Clerk. Ordinance for final passage, ordinance number 5134 of 2011, declaring certain adjudicated properties to be surplus and authorize the parish administrator designated to sell parishes tax interests. So that's just the intro oh, introduction. You said final pass. That's final pass. Second. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Moved by Representative Baker. Ms. Baker, seconded by Johnson. Commissioner Johnson. In a discussion. All right, that passes. Ordinance for introduction by title. Ordinance number 5159 of 2009 to deem property surplus for fleet service vehicles and to authorize the sale of surplus property. Ordinance number 5160 of 2011, declaring certain adjudicated properties to be surplus and authorize the parish administrator 
or designated sale tax interest. Ordinance number 5161. To amend the Cattle Parish Code of Ordinances by adding thereto section 52-150 pertaining to the construction and extension of waterworks systems. Okay. Mr. Thibodeau would like a comment relative to yeah, 5161. Right. I I'm, uh, I'm have asked that this go to the Natural Resources Committee, which they will meet two weeks from today. And uh, I anticipate there may very well be some changes in it at that time. So uh, <coughs> there's, uh, there's no reason uh, to discuss it at this time until after the committee has taken a look at it. If we find it, if it's necessary to postpone it at that time, uh, I'll, I'll do that. All right. Thank you, Mr. Chibidow. Next order, Ms. Click. Work session minutes of October 31. I'll ratify the work session minutes. So moved. Moved by Commissioner Escadet. Second. Seconded by Commissioner Johnson. We ratified work section minutes for October 31st. Okay. That's done. Next we move to resolutions. Resolution number 48 of 2011. Providing for the canvassing returns and declaring the results of the special election held in Cattle Parish, Louisiana on Saturday, October 22nd to authorize an additional homestead exemption for certain disabled veterans and surviving spouses. Uh -huh. Moved by Commissioner Lynch, seconded by Commissioner Thibodeau. Uh -huh. All right. Your vote. That passes. Resolution number 49 of 2011, the resolution expressing support for grant application by the Downtown Development Authority for a Brownfield grant in the amount of 200000 and otherwise providing with respect thereto. So moved. Second. Moved by Commissioner Lynch, second by the Chair. In discussion? In none. Uh, vote, please. That passes, Mr. Clerk. Resolution number 50 of 2011, supporting Cattle Parish Fire District number 3, requesting the parish submit a capital outlay request in the amount of $244,300 for the expansion of fire station number 4 to include living quarters and additional bay for equipment. Moved by the Chair. Second. Second by Commission Dominic. Seeing no. Request for discussion. We'll vote on resolution, please. Resolution passes. Move to new business. Confirmation for approval for a joint economic development partnership between the Cattle Fresh Commission and the City of Shreveport. So moved. Second. Moved by Commissioner Baker. Seconded by Commissioner Smith, was it? Yes. Any discussion? Okay, we'll vote. That passes. Next, confirmation for approval to remove the flagpole flying the Confederate flag displayed near the Confederate monument located on the Cattle Parish Courthouse grounds. So moved. Moved by Commissioner Bowman. Second. Second by Commissioner Pearson. In the discussion. Being no request for discussion, we'll vote on the motion, please. Pardon? I'm sorry. We have Mr. Thibodeau on the discussion. Yeah, I just want to say a couple things because this is a difficult decision. Um, I don't believe that taking the flag down would lessen racism because I believe it to be a historical matter. I don't think it would assist in bringing jobs. I don't think it increases tourism, and I don't think it improves justice. I can think of one instance uh, in my family in the, in the recent couple of years where a man broke into someone's house, beat up an uh, 80-year-old lady, and then beat up her son, and then burned him to death. And then after he had been found guilty and sentenced to life in prison, had the gall to say that, well, the only reason I didn't get a fair trial is because the Confederate flag went out there. The reason he didn't get a fair, that the reason that he got sent to jail for life is because he did all of that. And I know because it's a member of my family. So he did that. That's why he went to jail. It had nothing to do with the Confederate flag. That was, and and the, it was the insanity of an attorney to even want to utter those words to a judge, but he did. So uh, to believe that it improves justice, I, I don't really think that's that's a correct statement. And change for the sake of change is not always good. <coughs> Mr. Epperson just gave us a, a great example. St. Louis, they're picking up what we already have here in Shreveport that works and moving it to St. Louis, just for the sake of change. <coughs> I know there's a lot of politics involved in that, but. Uh, and uh, we also have had individual who, who uh, made it his political motto that 
hope and change, and, and that really hasn't worked out too well either. Uh, but having said all of that, having said all of that, I think that there is a that there is another location that is probably more appropriate for that flag since it represents the veterans who died. And there were 600,000 people who died in that, in, in that war. Uh, and that might be in the Confederate section of the Greenwood Cemetery. That, to me, would be a more appropriate place <coughs> to put that flagpole and flag. And I would hope that our administration and that the commission would agree that if it passes to take it down, which I believe that it will, that we will assist whoever in having that moved to the, another location. And I hope that we will also give them an appropriate amount of time to uh, take their flag down because the flag does belong to them, it doesn't belong to us, and not run over there and cut the lock on it and pull it down the first day. So I think I'd like to see us give, us, give, them, give them appropriate amount of time so they can respectfully take it down and assist them to move it to another location. And it's in that spirit that, that I will support the motion that's on the floor. But I didn't want to, at first I wasn't going to say anything, but I don't want for anyone to believe for one second that what I said earlier here, some of the reasons that I heard, I don't see them as being legitimate. I think that, uh, that it's strictly a historical, to me it's a historical monument, and, I, and the flag is historical, and I think the Greenwood Cemetery or something similar would be uh, an appropriate location for it. That's all. We have Ms. Bowman. Um, I would hope and I, uh, that 4 o'clock tomorrow is an appropriate time uh, to have it moved. And it is my hope that uh, administration will contact whoever they need to contact and let them know of the uh, commission's decision here today. Um, you know, I, we might not agree on a lot of things up here, and, um, and I don't necessarily come here to be disagreeable. I uh, understand everybody's position, and uh, trust me, in, in my humble opinion, um, I went to qualify as did so many other commissioners here over at the courthouse and we walked past that that flag and in my opinion it does not represent what I believe and to, in addition to that all 12 of our pictures hang on the wall in the courthouse and to an extent, it says to me that indirectly, I support what's there, and I don't support it. Um, 50 years is long enough, and uh, I believe it's time for us to move on. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, my fellow commissioners. I see no further requests for discussion. At this time, we will vote on the motion. That motion passes. Uh, at this time, I'd like to recognize Mr. Grubb. Mr. Grubb, would you give the uh, protocol for the action that we've just taken? Uh, Mr. President, I, I'm sensing that the sense of the commission is that uh, the flag be removed as, as uh, quickly as possible. As someone mentioned it, uh, as Mr. Thibodeau mentioned, it's not the parish's flag. It's, uh, and I'm going to attempt, as soon as this meeting is over with, to contact the uh, a representative of who I think is the owner of the flag and advise them that they need to come uh, uh, retrieve the flag tomorrow. Uh, and uh, if uh, for some reason that doesn't happen, I'll advise you all by email. But that's, uh, that's uh, what I tend to do unless it's struck to the contract. Okay. All right. Next order, please, Mr. Clerk. Next, we have the end of the year appointments for final confirmation for the December 8th meeting, sir. Just for your listing. Okay. Um, let's see. 
that's okay. We need to move them forward. I'm sorry. Okay. All right. I'd like to uh, get a motion to move so forward. Move. Yeah, the second. Second. Moved by Commissioner Baker, seconded by Commissioner Lynn. Uh, on the discussion, we have Mr. Cox. Well, mine was on the uh, on the other one, but y'all done bypassed it now, so go ahead. Okay. Uh, you'll vote, please, on advancing the appointments. Okay. Before we leave, uh, is, does that take care of all the agenda business, Mr. Yes, it does. Uh, I'd like to afford Mr. Uh, 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 Commissioner Pierce an opportunity to, it should probably be his last meeting, to uh, say a few comments uh, to this body. If you may indulge him, please. Thank you, Mr. President. I, I just want to be, I want to be brief, but I don't want to leave um, uh, until I, first of all, thank God for the opportunity. And certainly next, uh, I want to thank uh, uh, the, the, the people of District 3 who have uh, trusted me, you know, for almost 12 years uh, to, to handle their business <clears throat> and to do what uh, uh, we thought was the right thing to do. Uh, on the commission. Uh, next, I want to thank all of you, all of the commissioners who uh, I feel have, have given me so much and I've learned so much from and uh, really uh, I can't thank you enough. It's, uh, I, I don't want to start trying to thank individuals, but I, I think that uh, everyone has contributed to uh, my well-being in terms of my political astuteness and, and, and my knowledge of of, of the parish and those things that concern the people in the parish and certainly contributed to my uh, really feelings of, of how this parish is operated and and I, I want to thank you so much it's it's more than just a, a working relationship and it has been a tremendous working relationship but it, it's it has become to me more of a, a family relationship sometimes we fall out sometimes we we disagree you know but we move on because our goal and and those things that, that we hold dear is all about the people of this parish. And that just uh, it really you know, makes me feel good about it. I, I want to thank again uh, the people of, of the administration and all of the, the men and women who work uh, for, for putting up with me and those things that I didn't know and making sure that I had <laughs> reports filled out right and all of those things that, that, that you do to make um, me look good and make the people of, of District 3 think I'm really doing one heck of a job. And, and I really appreciate you and I thank you so much. And it's not like a goodbye deal with me, it's just see you later because I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna go too far. I still have everybody's phone number so I will be calling you. I will be seeing you on the, uh, in the governmental agreement, in the, in the governmental uh, uh, group. Yeah. And uh, so we, we still will be together. I'll see you at Independence Bowl and all those other times. And sometimes when I get a chance, I'm going to come down and sit on that side of the podium and, and, uh, and wish you well as you go about deliberating the business of the, of the parish. But again, I want to thank you so much for these 12 and almost 12 years. And I appreciate all of you uh, individually and collectively. And uh, Godspeed and good luck as we go about making this pass what we what we start what we really want it to be. Thank you much. We have uh, comments. We have Mr. Thibodeau and Ms. Baker. I, I just want to say that I've uh, known Paul since uh, 80 when I, first, when I was first on the school board. And uh, Paul has always shown uh, great wisdom. He's shown courage, and he's shown the willing to, willingness to work with, with anybody. And he's always had the best interest of, uh, of the citizens in mind. You can't ask for anything more than that. But once again, I do want to say to Carl, don't ask us for any money. <laughs> <laughs> Ms. <laughs> Baker. I just want to say um, thank you for um, taking me under your wing and teaching me. Uh, when I first got here, I didn't know nothing. And uh, you, I asked you and I asked you questions. And you let me sit by you for four years and bug you and ask you questions. And I enjoyed that. And 
and uh, I hope that you have uh, instructed your replacement uh, about me. And, and <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to take it through the airport. Okay, it ain't going to happen. Okay. <laughs> but um, I really uh, appreciate you and, and uh, enjoy working with you and wish you well. Uh, in your endeavors. Thank you, Linda. You have to thank him for helping uh, you off. Mr. Cox. <laughs> you know, when I first got here, everybody called you Coach. And I really didn't know why. But coaching me these last eight years, I can tell you I'm a better commissioner now than I ever thought I'd be. Uh, I hope you take uh, what you've done here to the school board because Lord knows they need all the help they can get. <laughs> and it's uh, if uh, term limits was not here, I could assure you we would be seeing you next week. And so uh, good luck, and uh, you will not be missed as much as you think. Uh, uh, we want you to know that as far as the Louisiana board, you were the best. Uh, anytime somebody needs you, you were there. Uh, Roland wanted me to tell you that, uh, you know, keep his phone number handy. Uh, when we come back up here, you're more than welcome. And uh, we love you. And we hope to see you go. Thank you, buddy. So pass the baton to that young man down there and, and tell him we got a big shed out back if he don't <laughs> act up. <laughs> Never see it. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Lynn? Um, everything that I've ever heard about Mr. Pearson has been good and all the all the things that people have ever called him have all been good and the one that sticks into my mind the most is is that he's a statesman and he and he he certainly has been that in my eyes um, <clears throat> this being my, my first jaunt in in the political world I, I want you to know that that of all the politicians I've ever met it's you that I've patterned myself the most after and I really appreciate the leadership that you've offered me Thank, Thank you, Matt. Thank you, Matt. Mr. Escudé. Hard to follow up on those comments, you know. Uh, I know you're going to say something. I'd say a lot of good things. <laughs> <laughs> I'd say a lot of good things about you, but you get home, your wife would contradict most of them if she's watching. So, uh, I just want to thank you. Uh, since I've been back, this is the second time we worked together. You helped calm me down about you. And uh, if that's oh, all positive, oh, I'm oh, oh. Hey, be thankful for what you got. <laughs> <laughs> Don't leave. And uh, I just want you to know, uh, all of the other good qualities aside, I just want everybody to know that I feel that Carl is uh, one of the few true gentlemen, gentlemen, that I've had the privilege to work with. And uh, he truly is. And I'm going to miss you. I'm going to miss you sitting there. And I just have one question. Do I have to sit next to Michael? I was like, we can sit next to Michael. Carl, I just wanted to tell you, I want to be the first one to tell you all that food over there is really not for you. It's for the Veterans Day ceremony. Okay, I'm sorry. Right, but, I'm you, you. but, uh, you know, when I came on board, uh, actually, you know, you were the president, and I looked up to you uh, a lot. You have done a wonderful, wonderful job, whether it was serving as president or a committee chair or president of the Louisiana Police Jury Association, you have represented uh, our citizens, our parish, <clears throat> even our state uh, in a just a, a great manner. And we're going to miss you. I'm looking forward for you going to the, the school board. And I'm like, uh, whichever one of the commissioner said, was it Commissioner Thibodeau? Please don't ask us for any money. Oh, over there. <laughs> and, uh, anyway, wish you good luck. Thanks. Thanks a lot, Dr. Davis. Lucky? Yes, sir. Mr. Pearson, uh, speaking from administration, Mr. Wilson and I talked this morning. You told me to be sure and get in some good words. I told him that wouldn't be a problem, but we always appreciate your kindness you had, not only toward administration, but toward all the uh, departments that have worked with you and you have worked with. And uh, we will definitely miss your leadership here. Brother man, bring that leadership over to the school board and, and get them in the direction they need to be going. And and make them answer that question that you asked them that day. That's the one they need to answer for. And you know what I'm talking about. Okay. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, we're going to close out. I think I had a request. I don't know who it was. Dr. From. Lampkin. Dr. Oh, Lampkin. Dr. Lampkin. Dr. Lampkin. Okay. Carl, you're the greatest. We all think so, too. And it's real simple. If you know Carl, you love Carl. And I just appreciate everything you've done for all of us. Thank, thank you, sir. Thank you, man. We recognize Dr. Lampkin. I just want to make a comment. Uh, I've known Carl since he was a little baby. <laughs> 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 
one time? Yeah, I can't believe it. He was a farmer's boy. You're older than we thought you were then. Say again? You're older than we thought you were. Boy, I'm 83 years of age. I was a mama's boy. Can you imagine that? And you would walk to talk to her, and he'd be hiding behind her legs. He was just hanging on to a dress there. What a gentleman he turned out to be. His father and my father played in the same band together. His mother and my mother were very close. And his brother, Don Pearson, was just as he was. He was a fantastic musician, but a perfect gentleman. So, Carl, I want to thank you for being such a great public service and a great individual friendship with me and my family. Thanks, Lee. Thank you very much. Thanks, man. Okay. Uh, relative to the appointment, uh, I think Mr. Grove, you'll agree that it's probably fitting that uh, Commissioner uh, elect Williams uh, has been elected to that seat, so it's a strong possibility, and I, I, I think the most viable alternative that we elect him, uh, appoint him for that interim position. So that's how that will be done. We won't take any resumes, anything from the public, because basically the people have spoken. See you here, John. Moved to John. All right. <laughs>